What's up, everybody? I'm the Goji Ryu philosopher, and I've seen some crazy stuff at competitions in my day. Maybe I'm a little bit of a joyless buzzkill, but personally, I'm not a big fan of watching people twirl around reflective, multicolored bows, do backflips, or perform kicking routines that look more like breakdancing at what's supposed to be a martial arts competition. To be fair, the athleticism and body control of this kind of tricking is still very impressive, and I have a lot of respect for people who can pull off stuff like that. But it feels wrong to me to lump that in with self-defense and fighting skills. A lot of kata and forms competitions involve a lot of spectacle and performance to try and impress judges and spectators. Unless you're sparring with someone using your kata techniques, it can be difficult to tell from watching the solo performance if they really understand the fighting techniques that they're performing. But it is a lot easier to see athleticism, power, precision, and physical awareness. Unfortunately, the setting of a competition means that athleticism is much more readily judgeable than the profound understanding of kata. While focusing on the aesthetics of your kata performance is by no means bad, this performance pressure has led to a pursuit of gorgeous, acrobatic, showy performances, but has unfortunately neglected the fighting techniques that karate has at its foundation. Perhaps, then, the most natural extension of this desire to seek aesthetics is the idea of performing kata to music. Having a soundtrack can give an emotional weight to even the most mundane movie scenes, so when music is paired with the fierce energy of a karateka performing a kanta, it becomes a breathtaking spectacle. Well, some of the time. Other times, it makes kata look like a silly dance where you wave your arms and legs around without achieving much of anything. The first time I saw a performance of kata set to music at a competition, it was very difficult not to laugh. Is there any sort of benefit to doing kata to music? Why has it become so popular? And why does musical kata seem to embody what karate's worst critics hate so much about the styles? Join me as I take a short look into musical kata. Let's get into it. While the most notable type of musical kata performance, and the type that made me want to make this video in the first place, is freestyle performances at competitions, the idea of performing martial arts techniques to music is by no means a new one. The Japanese term for performing martial arts is embu which is a homophone of embu, meaning dance performance. This is purely coincidence, since the only reasoning is that the character for martial and the character for dancing can both be pronounced bu in compound words. However, there is a large overlap between Okinawan folk dances and Okinawan martial arts traditions. At festivals, it's common for performers to demonstrate traditional dances known as odori, some of which make use of fans, and others of which make use of kobudo weapons. In his book Okinawan Karate, Mark Bishop talks about the Hunshin Ryu style of Kobudo, for which he interviewed Miyagi Masakazu-sensei, that style's founder. Their dojo practiced both katas and kumi dances, paired forms, that were intended to be performed at the festivals held every third and fourth year. Bishop's research seems to indicate that these dances were intended for performance, and that some of them may have had a semi-religious function. It's still common to see weapons dances being performed in Okinawa to this day, with even more traditional kata often being set to music. The rhythm of the music helps performers to keep a consistent pace, and it does make the performance much more engaging. In fact, even my style of kobudo, Matayoshi kobudo, includes traditional weapon stances in addition to the more standard kata in practice at the kodokan. Performing these forms to music doesn't seem to take away either from their power or from their practicality, at least in my opinion. Most of the techniques in traditional dances are, at the very least, no more flashy or unrealistic than those in non-musical kata. But there is a key difference, or rather several key differences, between these performances and the modern kind of musical performances that are seen in competitions. Obviously, the music and instrumentation are quite different. Okinawan dances are accompanied by music performed on Okinawan instruments, such as the sanshin or shamisen, a three-stringed lute instrument. Additionally, various percussion instruments provide the rhythm for these weapons dances. Contrastingly, Modern musical forms make use of all sorts of modern music, from EDM to string orchestras to Eye of the Tiger. That's probably to be expected, though. 
modern performers will use the music they're familiar with in their performances. What stands out to me as the biggest difference between those dances and modern performances is that in traditional weapons dances, the techniques are short, simple, and solid, merely being performed with expert timing and bodily control. The weapons themselves and their techniques largely resemble kobudo done without music, and the performers generally wear traditional dress. However, in more modern competitions, the level of theatrics gets much, much higher. Even when there's not music involved, open forms competitors will use any number of means to catch the eye of their judges. Empty-handed forms can include flips, aerial techniques, and the splits, but weapons competitors have so many more options, starting with the weapon itself. Kobudo weapons, generally speaking, were made either of hardwood or metal, and were fairly heavy. With the exception of the bladed kama and the spear-like sword of the timbe rochin, most kobudo weapons were designed to bludgeon an opponent in various ways, or at least to jab them without breaking their skin. This made most of the weapons fairly heavy, and limited the amount to which practitioners could swing them around. However, with modern materials like plastics and light aluminum, weapons can be manufactured that are light and easy to handle. Since forms competitors don't strike actual targets, the trade-off in strength that these materials have isn't important. Additionally, many performance weapons, especially the bow, kama, and nunchaku, can be covered in reflective material, causing them to be more visually stunning when they're swung around. By making the bows thin, or by opening holes in the blades of the kama, some manufacturers have also figured out that they can get the weapons to make whooshing sounds as they cut through the air. The lighter weapon designs, as well as the fact that any blades have been made dull and harmless, has allowed a new type of weapons technique to arise. Tricking. Performers will spin their weapons in complex circles, throw them and catch them, and perform leaps or somersaults as they do their techniques. These performances are high energy and visually stunning, especially when performed with these reflective weapons that leave streaks of light in the air. However, it's questionable whether these performances are practical. Spinning or rolling techniques might have served a function to prevent an attacker from closing a gap, but in all honesty, modern tricking reminds me of the scene from Indiana Jones where Indy counters a broadsword master by just shooting him and walking off. As for flips and baton-like techniques, it seems to me like a very bad idea, from a combat practicality standpoint, to purposely lose hold of your weapon. Barring weapons that are designed to be thrown, like some knives or the weighted chain sections of the kusarigama or suruchin, a thrown weapon is, generally speaking, a lost weapon. Furthermore, the speed of these performances prevents the music from really serving a rhythmic purpose. It sure does look cool, but in the same sort of way that gymnastics or cheerleading looks cool. I definitely don't want to discount the intense bodily and mental training that these performers go through in order to be able to pull off these feats, but at the same time it feels incorrect to talk about them in the same context as fighting, especially in the modern landscape where traditional martial arts are already being mocked, sometimes fairly, but other times not, for being fancy but useless dance routines. Why does musical kata trend towards acrobatic performance and away from practical technique? Obviously, some of it has to do with the commodification of martial arts. To quote Miyamoto Musashi, there are people who make a living by treating themselves as articles of merchandise and producing objects with a view to selling them. They adorn the way of strategy with flowery colors, lay out a display of techniques, and teach their way by creating first one dojo, then another. But more than just embellishing the existing techniques, musical kata often create their own spectacle that I believe has some unique disadvantages. The beginning of this trend, as far as I can tell, comes from the open kata division in tournaments. Karate competitions, such as those run by the WKF, used to have shite kata, a list of kata which must be adhered to by competitors. These are generally selected from the most popular styles, and were designated so that judges didn't have to be familiar with every potential style in order to judge different lineages against each other. Open kata was originally a format where Karateka who practiced less common styles, or whose proficiency lay outside of the shite kata list, could demonstrate their abilities. But in an open kata division, you no longer have the benefit of being sure that your judge has studied your kata, and can understand the technical subtleties of internal power or positioning. In this format, spectacle becomes much more important in receiving a winning score. Additionally, these divisions opened the way for katas created by non-Okinawan karateka to make their way into competition. Karate researchers like Ian Abernethy and Jesse Enkamp have developed a theory about how kata were originally created, 
in the Chinese martial arts that originally practiced them. These kata, they believe, originally started out as something like two-person sparring drills. Once a common method of attack was recognized, the fighters would determine an appropriate response to that attack. Only after doing this would they seek to represent that response in a single-person drill. String three to five of these back-to-back, -back, and you get a kata. However, as karate spread to the West after the Second World War, many of its practitioners didn't have enough time to understand this feature of karate. A lot of first-generation American teachers, for instance, developed their own katas by taking kihon techniques or other kata sequences and stringing them together into their own form. Many of these forms were based not on the techniques of classical forms, but rather on their aesthetics. Rather than the music affecting the kata, I believe it likely became prevalent in parallel with the more eye-catching acrobatic forms. The loss of practical technique and the ability to invent kata that looked interesting but contained very little fighting knowledge had already happened by the time karate competitions became widespread and the open kata division was invented. Both music and acrobatics were adopted for the same reason, which is that they make the performance stand out to the judges. However, it's also likely that gymnastics competitions, which often include routines set to music, influenced the types of techniques that were adopted into musical kata competitions. Does this mean that all musical kata is bad? Not necessarily. As I said earlier, like with gymnasts and acrobats, I have a huge amount of respect for the amount of bodily control that these athletes display. And I don't doubt that the muscular endurance and stamina that these performances require would be incredibly helpful in an actual fight, even if the forms themselves aren't particularly useful. However, it is somewhat worrying to me that these performances, excellent though they may be, are getting lumped in with martial arts. In the Chinese martial arts community, MMA fighter Zhu Xiaodong has faced intense discrimination and hatred from the government and Chinese citizens. His crime? Defeating masters of Wing Chun and other Kung Fu styles in fights. Many styles of Chinese martial arts have progressed into these acrobatic performances or complicated dances while still claiming to be effective fighting styles. Xu Xiaodong's simple pressure testing has shown that they are far from effective, and I worry that this could be the direction in which karate is headed unless we make the effort to distinguish the performance of karate from the fighting skills of karate. The good news is that functional karate is still a thing. The important thing to remember is that we have to be clear with ourselves, as karateka, why we're training karate and what we want to get out of it. For some, it can be a fun, functional calisthenics exercise. For others, it can be a wonderful cultural or performance art. And for still others, we want our karate to help us defend ourselves or learn to fight in the ring. But whatever your preference is, make sure that your school helps you towards that goal. Some kata competitions are much more restrictive and take steps to focus solely on the understanding of the technique rather than the visual appeal of the form. And if you want to test your karate under fire, styles like kyokushin do contact sparring, and if you want the head contact that some kyokushin schools often miss, you can always participate in amateur MMA fights or cross-train with other arts. Thank you for sticking with me through this video. If you enjoyed this brief discussion of musical kata, please hit the like button to let me know. Also, feel free to leave a comment letting me know if I missed a point that you wanted me to touch on. While you're doing all that, if you'd like to see more videos on the philosophy of karate and martial arts in general, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I upload. I've been the Gojuryu Philosopher, and don't forget, if you do your kata right, no can defense. <laughs> Do right, no can defense.